Okay, so I just want to start this video saying sorry to you guys because, you know, I haven't been streaming. Um, I've been, you know, it's been holiday season. I've been hanging with the family, hanging with my girlfriend and just relaxing, taking some downtime, recharging the batteries. So, you know, once we do come back to streaming, we're a bit more refreshed, a bit more recharged. You can probably tell by me I'm a bit more energetic. You know, I don't look as tired as normal. I still look tired as fuck, but, you know, that's just me. Um, but, you know, I, I wanted to do a video for everyone. Um, you know, I don't want to be a negative guy all the time about TCM. Obviously, there's just not a lot of stuff going on with the game right now. You know, they've just had a double XP event. I'm going to talk about that real quick. So, you know, they tweeted that they're going to be doing a, They did a double XP on Christmas Eve to Boxing Day. So the 24th to the 26th. And, you know, there was a lot of negative feedback about that. I can kind of see why they did that, though. You feel like, you know... Oh, uh, maybe someone got someone Texas Chainsaw Massacre for Christmas. By the way, I wouldn't thank you for a copy of Texas Chainsaw Massacre for Christmas. But, you know, there's people out there that's probably bought it for their, their boyfriends or whatever. Or their partners. They've, you know, here's a, a new ASIM game, new horror game for you to enjoy. And, you know, there's double XP on it. So, you know, they hop on, you know, they're leveling up faster. And they're getting up to a, a, a decent level relatively fast, which is, you know, makes sense. But... For the people who already play the game, it kind of didn't make sense because you kind of choose, like, you know, it's holiday season, you know, people don't have time because they're spending time with family, you know, who needs double XP when you got family, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's just a bit of a weird time and I feel like the double XP should have went on till after New Year, honestly. That's not to say they won't do another double XP event over New Year, but... I just don't understand why they didn't do it from the 24th to the 2nd of January or something like that. Speaking of which, uh, you know, they're supposed to be dropping some family cosmetics relatively soon. Uh, they did say in one of the first, I think it was the first dev stream after the game come out, that they would be dropping some family cosmetics by the end of the year. So he said that could lead into the 1st or the 2nd of January. So we might be seeing some family cosmetics relatively soon on Texas Shears or Massacre. But anyways, let's go into the meat and potatoes of this video, which is 10 things I'd want to see in TCM in 2024. Now, this is actually the second time I've done this video. I originally did it. It was over an hour long. I didn't want it to go so long because I felt like I went on a bit of a rant about certain topics. But, you know, I'm not going to dissect every little thing like I did last time. Uh, but let's just jump straight into it. So at number 10, I've got less broken characters existing. So what I mean by that is you guys know who play the game a lot. Since the game's come out, we've had, you know, Johnny been busted. Sissy's been all over the place. Uh, I'm not saying she's a broken character, but you know, she's underperforming massively. Johnny's lunge is just fucking crazy. I don't care what anybody says. Johnny doesn't get a speed boost with his lunge, blah, blah, blah. The hitbox, the animation, whatever the fuck you want to call it, just doesn't work very well. Um, I do not like it. The character it got nerfed into the ground. They brought back a broken lunge, and now everybody's doing the whole swing tech bullshit, whatever the hell you want to call it. it it's just terrible. I don't like it. Connie still exists in the way she is, you know, instantly unlocking doors. Danny's existing, instantly tampering with objectives. We need to see some less broken characters in the game, because then it also falls on, you know, Leatherface almost one shot and a victim as well. What's going on here? You know, we just have, like, these characters down here. Then we've got, you know, these moments where characters just spike the balance, just way out of unbalancedness of the game. And it's just, what is going on? Like, we need to stop this. So in 2024, they really need to be looking at balancing the characters like that and, you know, fixing broken characters like Johnny, reworking them into a position where they're actually a viable pick, not based on exploits on hitboxes or lunges or animations, whatever you want to call it. We don't want that, right? So, yeah, I think it's a very, very good point to have that in 2024 looked at. So at number nine, I've chosen Polish. Now, what I mean by Polish is... The natural feel of things when you're playing the game so you know that's interaction grabbing health bottles uh getting the unlock tools you know some this is a weird game for me you know it feels very beta sometimes or early access you know i took a week off away from this game and when i come back and the first time i streamed this game i actually thought i was lagging but then i remembered um no this is how the game plays you've got to be in like a specific frame in order to actually do something or you've got to press this button numerous amount of times before it actually does anything you know you have situations it, this is mainly on controller by the way it might be a bit different on keyboard and mouse but you know there's situations where you'll be trying to like sprint away from a door and your character's trying to like latch or unlatch the door when you're trying to run away from a family member or something uh you know you're grabbing health bottles that are like 
all the way over there like using the force and just pulling him towards you and stuff and you know you're trying to slam a door and you're grabbing a valve handle you know all those types of interactions just feel awful and that kind of goes into the hitboxes as well the hitboxes are both sides it's just perceived very differently so on family side we have these hitboxes where you've got to be like standing on top of the victim's head to actually get a hit but on victim you see something completely different like, you're getting hit from Mars by Johnny or Hitchhiker, and you're like, what the hell is going on here? There's something not right with the hitboxes or the hit detection, or maybe we're playing on, like, low-tick servers. I really don't know what's going on, but, like, you shouldn't be playing two different sides all the time and just seeing a totally different results from the same mechanic taking place. It's just, it's very, very bizarre. And going into polishing a little bit further here, uh, with Leatherface, so with Leatherface, you know, you can feel like, I mean, just family members in general can feel horrible to play in this game because, you know, you've got the, like, the whole tank control feel and it, it feels nasty to play them, you know, it's not a case of, like, you're directing your camera to where you want to swing, it's like you've got to direct your character where you want to swing and that's why I call it, like, tank controls, like the old Resident Evil games where you had to turn the character to actually face a zombie to attack them. And it just doesn't feel nice. It doesn't feel intuitive enough in a game that's quite modern these days. Now, I'm not saying you can kind of counteract to that, but, you know, when the aim assist or the attack assist comes into play, that really does mess up your ability to even kind of do something skillful. You know, it, it, the same goes mainly with lever phase. You're doing the overhead rev. If someone literally just hits a corner, you can just miss that so easily just because you have to adjust that with the movement stick rather than the camera angle and trying to adjust things with a, with a camera angle uh, with a character uh, movement stick rather than the camera angle is very, very difficult. It really is. So um, just overall feel of family needs to just feel a little bit nicer. And of course, this is something that I'm expecting like a quality of life adjustment to be happening throughout the year. You know, just... Uh, no, no, we've polished up the interactions a little bit. We've polished up the hitboxes a little bit. You know, something like the, along those lines. I think that needs to be happening next year. Of course, there is things like with Leatherface again. I keep coming back to Leatherface because he does feel kind of messed up character. You know, when he's doing his overhead rev. And I suppose this goes for other family members as well. You know, you have those like tiny little frames or, you know, you've got to wait a few seconds before you can like slam a door with Leatherface. You know, you're in the overhead rev. You've got to come out of that. Then you've got to hold down Y in order to break the door, hold down triangle, whatever you're playing on. You've got to hold down a button in order to like break something. And it's just so annoying. Or even to do the chainsaw for us, you know, if you're an overhead rev, you should just be like, you drop out of that and you instantly go into the chainsaw thrust animation or you drop out of it, you're instantly going into the door break animation or you're instantly going into the pallet breaking animation. I'm not saying instantly break these things, but stop it to where we're going overhead rev and then, oh, we've got to slow down and now we've got to hold down Y to start the slow animation. It just feels horrible. It's not very polished, honestly, and I really, really dislike it. So in 2024, I feel like it's, you know, this is number nine on my list. I, this is kind of in order of how important I think these things are, but it's going to, it's going to show what some problems are within this game, that this is at number nine, to where we're going to be getting into a lot more important things to increase player retention, make the game feel better for everyone, and this is what we need. So next year, like I said, polish number nine. And number eight, we need better map reworks, the current ones, and weather cycles. So... We need better maps in general, right? So the current maps, they're sort of okay. They need some reworks because, you know, when you play in family, there's certain sides to it where it's, I think gas station comes to mind the most. You know, they'll be hitting that one wall gap in the middle of the map. But if you're playing Cook, you've got to take like a six hour detour just to counter out that, counteract that one wall gap. And yes, you could say go on comms with people, but at the end of the day, not everybody wants to use comms. So it's not always a simple solution to that or... You know, another family member could be too busy guarding car battery. One could be busy guarding generator to where you're stuck trying to chase one person in the middle of the map as cook. And, you know, you can't counter that because it's like a six hour detour just to counter one wall gap. So needs to be some new mechanics in place with that just to better improve the maps. Again, with Leatherface in mind on Family House in particular in the basement, you know, there's one wall gap where you go from... um Leatherface is layer to uh, it's like the, the corner stairs so there's that one wall gap that has to be counted by you know at least three or four doors and then sometimes there can even be an obstacle that you've got to break to counter that wall gap 
And then not only that, but there's three different like wall gaps that that victim can use. So even if you try and counter that by going through three doors, they've then got two other wall gaps to use. It, it's incredibly unbalanced situations here. And I'm, you know, I'm not a family man. I'm actually more of a victim man, but I see these things happening in the game. Every time I'm playing the game, you know, I'm always looking for these things. I want to better improve the game. And for me, a lot of that stuff exists on these maps to where it can lead to unpleasantness in the gameplay. Or it can just lead to things just being totally unbalanced, in my opinion. So, uh, like I said, better maps in the future because, you know, we've just had Nancy's map. And, you know, I kind of hate playing on that map, if I'm being honest. I don't mind the other three maps in the game. Like I said, they will probably get some reworks later on down the line to where it feels a little bit more balanced. But I don't know what it is with Nancy's map. I don't enjoy playing it on either side. I think it's just the whole garden area. The whole garden area just feels so empty. If, if that makes sense, like, you know, you kind of have like two doors going over a car battery that are like so close together. And then you have the generator spawning in this like completely dead area to where, you know, there's not much that you can maneuver through as victims. So if you get caught out there, you're kind of screwed and you have to try and well again, like and get into the basement. But those wells are just so easily countered. It's kind of weird. And then you've got like a little side gate that leads to a ladder to go inside the house. There's just a lot of pointless areas and pointless places to victims to unlock because there's just no reason to even really go that way unless you just want to get some extra points for unlocking a gate that's not really going to make much difference because you unlock the gate the ladder goes into the house which it can lead to a fuse box i guess but really it's just um it just it, it feels like an off map to me and it's very easily sped run as well you know if someone doesn't set up as cook correctly or hitchhiker correctly on the generator and the front gate you know a victim like a couple of victims could just run up there i've done it myself you can escape the map in like 70 to 75 seconds no problem so it requires a proper setup which is a bit of a downside to the map and again this just leads me to saying we need better maps and of course it just it shares the same aesthetic as the current maps in the game you know just sunflower fields the same wells the same gates, the same, yeah, it's just everything looking very samey, you know, and then we just got that inside of the house, and I'm not saying, like, the maps look terrible, but, you know, I do appreciate all the design that goes into them and how they look as graphically, but from a play, like, from a playing or gameplay standpoint, they just, it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right compared to the other three maps in the game, and it's not for me to say, like, uh, oh, I haven't learned the map. In, in and out it's because they have actual moments in the map where the valve can spawn literally opposite the fuse box in the same area which is the barn like you literally have them both next to each other to the point where one person can just sit there and guard that area easily and that's valve and fuse box completely off the table I don't know. It, it's just, a, it's a very unbalanced map. I, I really dislike it on both sides. I feel like it's too big for family. And for victim, it can just feel absurdly empty. To which case, you're like, oh, I guess I'll go car battery or I go out front gate. Most of the time, I, you don't really see me play for Valve or Fusebox on that map because it just feels like a mess, honestly. And yeah, there's just too many gates and locks leading to nowhere. And... <sighs> You know, there's so many locks leading into the house, but then the house just leads to the front gate in anyways. It's just baffling, like, what their thought process is with this map. But I suppose it's a little different change of game style or play styles to where, you know, there's different ways to escape. But it's it's still just, you know, falling. I think it's probably the worst map in the game, honestly. Right? Ever since Slaughterhouse had its adjustments to being a better map, that map is much better to play on now and... The, you know, the current three maps we already had are just way better than Nancy's house in the game. Uh, despite their issues, obviously not every map is going to be perfect, but, you know, I think Family House um, is probably the least liked of the original three maps now. But again, I, I, I still think Family House is way better designed than Nancy's house. I really do. Uh, so and another thing that, we, you know, at number eight, we are talking about better maps, reworks the current ones, and I did add at the end weather cycling. So what I mean by this is, uh, I think Wes touched upon this a little bit in one of the dev Q&As, and he said that uh, 
somebody asked about you know adding atmosphere to the game like rain thunder and lightning and stuff and he kind of came back with this ridiculous reply saying like that's gonna be way too expensive um so if we added weather effects into the game you know would the would the rain soak the clothing that are covered in blood so then it would soak the blood as well you know would we leave muddy footprints everywhere going in and out of the house and stuff like that like he made it be like this really big AAA in detail thing that we wanted into the game. It really wasn't. Like it's 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 more or less a simple thing because you know this is the Unreal Engine and I've done a little bit of work in the Unreal Engine on Unreal Tournament three way back in the day. You used to be able to create your own maps and you know you had all these weather cycles already built into the engine. So I don't understand. Like, obviously, games are coded differently. Every game's coded differently, but with an engine like Unreal. Most of the stuff's already there and assets are already there for you to use or utilize and then add your own code on top of that to improve upon it for it to work within your game. So it's a bit weird and, and you know, I'm not going to pretend that I, I'm going to say that he's lying about it being expensive because I'm pretty sure it will be. But when he's talking about it being so in detail, it just kind of lost me there because, you know, I don't think Texas has ever been the type of game where you can say, wow, the detail on this is insane. Like, yeah, the game looks great, but, you know, I think anyone who's playing this game, who has played any AAA game, will say, you know, this game does still feel very indie, but not to say it doesn't look great. <laughs> so, adding weather cycling, it just needs to be something simple. You know, you're adding some rain, you're adding some thunder and lightning. And I, I just, I don't see why we need to go so in detail about leaving muddy footprints everywhere. Because at the moment, yeah, I mean, it, we're in Texas, we're running around in mud already in the sun. But not to say that you're not going to get some dog shit or some mud on your shoes to be running that into the house, you know, and leaving footprints everywhere. Like, that, if you want to go that in detail, you, why are you not putting that in your game already? So it's a bit of a weird excuse, if I'm being totally honest. Um... Uh, and he also said something ridiculous about, oh, you know, they also have hurricanes in Texas where, you know, what if we have a hurricane coming on the map and then, you know, that takes away front of the house and everyone's running out the house and he said he doesn't want that. It's like, who asked this? Nobody asked that question. All we asked was, are you going to add some weather cycles to the game? You know, it's a horror game. You want to feel it atmospheric. You know, we're getting tired of looking into the sun 24-7. And, you know, there's only a couple of uh, nighttime maps on this game. You know, it's only on two of the maps. So, like, what's going on here? You know, just add some weather cycling. It's it's no big deal. Uh, like I said, just add some rain, add some uh, lightning effects and stuff. Just it creates a whole atmosphere. And, you know, even Dead by Daylight managed to do this. And, yeah, I mean, Dead by Daylight. It's I mean, I'm talking about early Dead by Daylight. Even early Dead by Daylight that had probably way less devs than this actually managed to have rain and stuff on its map so you know why, why don't we have it on texas is what i'm trying to say we should have it on this game yes it's in texas but it's not to say texas isn't fucking foreign to having rain snow all these different weathers happening in that climate like it should be happening within the game it would create a lot of atmosphere like i said it's a horror game most horror games are dark gritty you know rain lightning clouds all that stuff needs to be happening more in this game and you know just that's what i want to see next year i just want to see better maps overall better map design and just better atmosphere on the maps um so at number seven i have perk reworks now <laughs> i don't want to get too much in detail about perk reworks but there is so many perks in the game there's some on victim you know where the buff is supposed to be applied for like 15 seconds but you actually lose like five seconds of that buff because you're stuck in an animation that is required to get the buff, if that makes sense. So um, I'm not sure what the perk is actually called, but there is one called Slippery, where you're actually going through the wall gap and it will trigger <laughs> during the wall gap animation and then you'll lose time on Slippery, which is a, it bo like a boost of your movement speed there. There's one, I think it is Choose Fight. I could be wrong there, but there's one way you win a close encounter, you gain uh, a little speed boost as well, or that might be Empowered, something like that. Um... But anyways, you gain the buff and you lose it because you're stuck in the close encounter animation. So you lose like five seconds of that buff. So, you know, there's perks like that that kind of just need to be looked at a little bit. Uh, family side, you know, we've got so many pointless perks. Victim side, we've got so many pointless perks. You know, the meta is so one-dimensional. Choose flight, extra drip, fucking anything, any third perk that you want to rumble that. But, you know, there's just so many filler perks within the game as well that just need taken out. 
or even reworked uh you know family side there's so many useless ones you know you've got the chicken one you got bringing home the bacon like yeah because we all go for gallo kills right there's just so much stuff like that and <laughs> they have said that they're going to be taking out perks and reworking them and things and i don't understand why we even have exclusive perks to danny and nancy uh, Nancy, sort of, I can understand because it's based around her traps, but with Danny, it's just like, why is this guy exclusive? He got fast hands, which would be, you know, probably his, maybe he's, I mean, fast hands probably needs nerfed, but you know, it could work well on Julie or Sonny. Obviously, we don't want to see that shit on Connie. Like, it's a no brainer. You don't want to give, like, Connie a perk like fast hands because you'll just be go for every door like that. No, we don't want that. But. You know, just overall, a lot of perks just need changed up. We want to shift the meta around, you know, all the whole door slam and stuff. You know, this kind of goes back to polishing as well. All, all the door mechanics just suck in this game. And I think they went the wrong way about it. You know, the whole opening and closing doors, slamming, knocking Bubba over with a 110 pound Connie with a fucking door. And this dude's like 300 pounds running around. Uh, you know, him just getting decked off Connie through a door slam just... It feels out of place, and the whole mechanic in general just feels awful. So, and so I have a little suggestion what you could do with doors instead. So there is a perk called Deadbolt or something like that, or Deadlock, I can't remember what it's called, where if you latch a door, it's actually stronger for a family member to break through. Now, it would be cool if we actually started seeing a meta here that was more uh, diverse in something where you could actually have some chasing and running builds. To where, you know, there's ones where you can, you know, instantly break through a door, which does exist on a, a few of the family. Uh, but I'm saying on the victim side of things, it would be really cool if you could get a perk which allows you to run through a door and then quickly latch it. But then the family member's going to interact with it and break it down. And then, you know, there's just doors breaking and particles flying everywhere. I think it would just lead to a more fun atmosphere within the game. Uh, and you know, there would be some adjustments around that, obviously, balancing wise. But you know, this is the type of stuff that we need to be seeing in the game because right now we're just we're, like, this is the whole game here, right? This is the whole game. We're in like a little section right now, away from the whole game, where we're not using so many, like, it's all these different mechanics not being used. Sorry, hit my mic. There's all these different mechanics not being used. You know, we're just all stuck doing the same thing over and over again in this little circle when the game is just so expansive because, you know, all this other stuff, it's just a waste of time. It's pointless. What's it doing in the game? It needs reworked. You know, all this shit just needs looked at next year. Otherwise, you know, I, the reason I'm doing this for 2024 for this game is, you know, we lost Evil Dead this year and it sucks. You know, there's a lot. Of, I don't think there was that much problems with Evil Dead other than, you know, just lack of content, lack of communication of the players. I feel like if we kept getting content and communication, the game would still be alive. Yeah, there was some balancing issues, but the game overall just felt fucking amazing to play and really fun. And, you know, it felt polished. It looked amazing. But Texas, yeah, the gameplay replayability is really, really fun. It's probably like at the top of its genre in terms of replayability because of the gameplay but you know there's just all these things surrounding it just just let it down there's so many problems like that that i think need to be looked at in 2024 and this is what this list is for this is the i'm highlighting the problems that i think is hindering the gameplay standing out even more and i think it's only healthy to do that you know i i I don't want to be a negative guy all the time. I wish there was positive things to talk about with this game. Being like, oh man, I can't wait for them to be adding currency to this game. And, you know, doing a whole concept idea talking about that. You know, it would be nice to do that. But at the end of the day, you know, this game's just had its new characters drop, you know, about a month ago. Or, yeah, just, yeah, I think it was about a month ago. Yeah, it's the 28th today. So it was about a month ago that they actually got their uh, DLC. But the like the game's actually lost more players than it had before it had the the new dlc drop like stuff like that shouldn't be happening we need to be looking at player retention you know what's the problem here and that's what, what i want to get across in a video to everyone and you know maybe the devil see this who knows but you know i just want to be nice about it and you know just highlight the issues and what can improve the game going into next year and you know they said they only have six to nine months of content now, this could be a problem, 
uh, the anniversary, they did say they're going to be doing a Steel Book edition, so hopefully they are planning to do a year two for this game. Uh, ideally, a roadmap would be nice, but hopefully they have an internal roadmap that is kind of highlighting most of the stuff that I've said here already that they're going to be looking at doing. You know, I'm not saying you need to do this like one update after the other. This is like quality of life improvements that can go on for the next like nine to ten months or something like that. I would like to see happen in the game and. That's definitely something that should be happening. And so yeah, at number seven, perk reworks. Very, very important. I said, we're just stuck in this little circle down here, like in the corner of the game, where we're just ignoring all these different opportunities, you know, like hiding spaces, uh, gallo kills, all this stuff just gets underused. So many different filler perks that just, <laughs> you know, there's probably perks out there that have never been picked by anyone. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised, so we need to be looking at stuff like that next year now number six it is better cosmetics now i'm not going to get into this too much but i'm just going to give you my quick opinion on this that uh this is a video game at the end of the day yeah they're very low heavy with this game you know it's set three months before uh, the movie so that is a prequel now with better cosmetics I'm saying this because I feel like the cosmetics that have came out that were like $5, I don't even think they were worth $5. And the reason I'm saying that is they kind of fluffed them up a little bit with the recolors. If you took away all the recolors that you got in that pack and you just looked at that one outfit that you got for the victims, if you just looked at that one outfit, you'd probably turn around and say, I wouldn't pay $5 for that. These, to me, just look like free cosmetics that we should be earning within the game. Leveling up the characters, unlocking cosmetics like this. And yeah, this was also a problem with the game, just kind of being a bit lackluster when it came out with due to the lack of content. And we'll get into that in like a two, in a couple of other points uh, later in the video. But, you know, just the, the whole general feel of the cosmetics for me just look very bland, they're very plain. You know, they said they take 60 days to make, you know, they ordered their magazines off eBay and stuff. I don't know what's going on there. Julie's out, like, no shit to you guys. Like, I'm not lying right now. And you can probably go back to the stream when they actually introduce these uh, victim cosmetics. But Julie ran on my screen with her new outfit. And I legit turned around and said, is that her new outfit? Like, I really didn't know because it looks so similar. And the way they promoted them, they cut like half of the bodies off. So you couldn't even see what they were wearing on their legs or anything. It was just bizarre. They need to improve massively on the cosmetic standpoint. And like I said, they are so invested in their lore to the point where they feel probably like they probably is restricting themselves or they're hindering themselves from doing something unique and fun for each character. But I feel like we'd be more inclined to pay in like, you know, seven dollars for a, a cosmetic or something on Leland where, you know, he actually changed his hairstyle. So his hair's all like slick back or something. You know, he's got a cool black leather jacket on or something like that all these different accessories now again there's always the question like oh why would the victim be wearing backpacks and stuff when they're hanging upside down in the basement you know this is the problem with the game it's kind of hindering itself to having all this shit at the start of the game that it's like anything that gets added to the game it needs to make sense to the law every time and this is what's kind of fault in the game being uh you know expansive or being expanded upon in a lot more fun detail is just the law itself and how the devs are just so dedicated to that law and i respect that you know i respect saying de uh, staying dedicated to any law in any video game but at the end of the day if you've got a dwindling player base you need to be looking at ways to be like player retention fun what looks cool video like what's going to sell and you know, what, what's going to make people want to play the game. It's a video game at the end of the day. A lot of people like me don't really give a shit about the lore, if I'm being totally honest. I mean, yes, I don't want to see some stupid cosmetics. I'm not saying that, you know, I don't want to see these fucking space outfits and bright fluorescent pink and green neon outfits or anything like that. I'm just saying, you know, it's just doing a quick Google search or anything like that, just seeing outfits where, you know, they're carrying bags or backpacks, you know, different hairstyles for the characters because they're all looking very samey right now. And it's very bland and way too serious, way too serious. So, uh, yeah, I mean, in 2024, 100% better cosmetics need to be added to the game. All right. So at number five, I have chose better progression system. Now, we all know how bad the progression system is within this game. You get a level 99. That's it, really. Like... You will just, if you're not at level 99 right now, you will just get like a, a fucking curtain going over your eyes, 
dropping over you, like dropping over your brain, just thinking like, well, what the hell am I going to do now? You know, it's not that important to level everyone up to level three because, you know, there's chances are you're not going to play that character. Like me, I haven't leveled up Danny at level three or Nancy at level three because I've just got no interest in playing them, honestly. And, you know, I suppose that kind of falls into the whole uh, better cosmetic side of things as well. Like Danny and Nancy just look very plain to me. Like they just, they don't scream like, oh man, I can't wait to play this character. Uh, no, I, I, I'd rather play the current characters within the game because that's what I like to see. And that's who I like to play, you know? Uh, Danny and Nancy just look uh, very vanilla, and there's just nothing really cool about them to the point where I'm going to go, oh, yeah, I'm going to pick up that guy. Uh, and a lot of people are just picking up Danny because he's broken right now. So uh, getting back to a better progression system anyways, you know, you, you get a level 99, you're just like, well, that's it. You know, what am I playing for, really? And yeah, they said they're going to be adding currency and stuff, so that's probably something we will see in 2024, but... You know, we need to be looking at prestige here. And I'm very terrified about the prestige system, actually, because when they have spoken, and like, going past level 99 or whatever, uh, this might not have anything to do with the prestige system, but they have talked about going past level 99, and then they said stuff like, well, if you go past level 99, um, like we did with Friday the 13th, you know, we're going to maybe add some stuff to the skill tree and stuff. And that, that's got me fucking terrified because, you know, Evil Dead, you had the prestige problem. <laughs> If you prestige your characters, you got uh, more of a benefit to your character feeling stronger. And you don't want that in TCM. Trust me, you don't want to be going, uh, you know, Connie's level 3 ability going up to level 5. Or Bubba's level 3 ability going up to level 5. You don't want that. You don't want additional percentages and stuff being added to the character. Just because you have more game time. That's something that would happen in a PvE game. Because this is solely focused on PvP, we can't be having stuff where we're going to be getting a massive buff just because we have more playtime than some random person that's just picked the game up today because there's no MMR in place or anything like that. And they said they're not adding an MMR because they don't want the game to be competitive. So if you're doing a prestige system, you 100% need to be making that cosmetic based. <laughs> now the problem is uh the unlocks uh, i mean when the game come out i'm not sure what they were thinking with the unlocks here because man you put in a lot of hours to get a level 99 and it's just kind of the point where you know just unlocking fucking behind the scenes stuff and concept art cards and stuff like that i mean yeah that stuff's cool but where's the cosmetics where's the executions where's the new weapons where is any of that it doesn't fucking exist within the progression system so you don't even need to go to level 99, by the way. I think it's like level 75 now because Danny and Nancy's been added to where you'll have enough skill points to max everyone out at level 15 anyway. Uh, level 10, sorry, by spending like 50 odd uh, skill points on them. So, so the key thing is to really get a better progression system in place. Once we get a level 99, if we're going to go to 150, I need to be seeing cosmetic rewards, prestige, Weekly challenges, daily challenges, all that stuff just needs to come together. We're obviously going to be getting the currency next year, hopefully. Uh, they did say they want to give us all uh, currency to get earnable stuff within the game. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that might drop away from the, the characters as well, costing $10 each, because he said, uh, Wes said that, you know, we want ways for people to earn the stuff within the game to where they can't actually afford that character. So if that's the case, then that's going to be a big win for the game next year to where we can... I'm not saying we need everything for free, but in terms of characters and stuff like that, I feel like those should be earned from game time. And cause, like, you know, having the cosmetics that I just talked about before when I said better cosmetics, having those in the game for something that... Uh, you could pay for to monetize the game, to keep the game afloat, to fund servers, to fund updates and content. You know, just having a nice cycle going like that, I think would work really good. And that's going to fall into my next point here. So like we just talked about, number five, better progression system. And this is very fucking vital, what I'm about to talk about now. So number four, what I want to see next year from TCM is a battle pass. Now, before you turn off the video, because you don't like a battle pass, hear me out about this, okay? So, the reason I'm saying a battle pass is the base game doesn't have enough content. So, you know, this game was a $40 game, you know, comparing it to a game that was $40 uh, about 13 years ago. 
if not more. I would say about 13 years ago. Comparing to games like Gears of War, Call of Duty, there's old PvP games that were the same price. And then you've got TCM, which is the same price 13 years later. It's got way less content than those games. And yeah, I mean, money obviously changes value over years. You know, it seems to get worth less and less and less. So it could be a case of where Texas, if it came out 13 years ago, would have only been like a $20 game or a $25 game, you know. But this doesn't take away the fact that, you know, everyone complains about why is every game getting a battle pass? Well, let me just fucking tell you real quick. It's because the base game doesn't have enough content. It's as simple as that. When games come out, they have enough content. You don't crave anything like a battle pass. Games like Payday 3, for example, has enough content. There's enough to grind for. There's challenges to focus on. There's a high profile level for you to grind for. Not to mention, once you do get to the max profile level, you then gain like these sort of renowned levels where you unlock cosmetics. So yeah, there's not a lot in that game right now, but they are adding stuff for free and you know things for you to unlock as you're going along with the game. Now, <laughs> Diablo, Diablo gets a battle pass, but a lot of people aren't even thinking about buying the battle pass on that game because it's just got so much content. Now I know I'm comparing apples to oranges here, you know, AAA developer studios, but uh, Payday 3 definitely ain't no AAA developer studio, I'll tell you that. So I think it's only, only fair to compare it to that. There was games back in the day, Call of Duty Gears of War, where they just had so much content for you to earn and unlock within the game at the like one price point, and you could just grind for hours and hours and hours in the multiplayers to unlock all these different skins. By the time you even got anywhere with that, to a way you'll like maybe it's even started feeling the slightest bit of boredom playing the game, they drop some new content. However, back then, they used to charge for maps, but, uh, you know, they dropped in some new characters and things. Like, this is the problem with some ASM games now. And if you look at Dead by Daylight, and, yeah, you know, the whole argument, it's been out seven years, blah, blah, blah. But if you just look at that real quick, the base game of Dead by Daylight, you can probably pick that up for, like, $5, all right? And you don't have to pay for anything in that game to have access to probably like 70% of that game's content which is a shitload of those original chapters now a lot of people like the license stuff but you can earn a lot of stuff in that game just by grinding iridescent shards and yeah iridescent shards take a long time to grind for stuff for free but there is still a way to earn it within the game for original content and you get a lot of that and you're only paying like five dollars for the base game there so this is what I'm talking about with Texas, okay? This is why I ask for a battle pass all the time. Why the fuck, okay, prior to launch, they come out and said, we're not doing battle pass, we're doing traditional DLC. I'm sorry, but it's called traditional DLC for a reason, whereas nobody fucking does it anymore. Unless it's like a single player game or something like that. Traditional DLC in a PvP game, you can do that. If your base game has enough content to keep player retention in, it does not. That means you need to be looking at stuff like a battle pass. And I know a lot of people maybe dislike the battle pass because they've only got a few hours a day. They don't want to miss out on content. Yada, yada, yada. That goes on. Of course it does. I'm not saying I don't want to give, like take that anything away from you guys about that. But, you know, for people like me who have a lot of time to play a video game and a lot of other people do as well who are probably watching this video, I'd be thinking, you know, I want my time to feel worthwhile while I'm playing the game, especially on max level right now. You know, get some dailies, weekly challenges in there, get an XP towards the battle pass, our profile level, all this shit. Prestige system as well, you know, having all this just working hand in hand to where every game we're doing something, we're progressing in these multiple areas. It gives like such a fun side grind to people where they're like, yes, yes, yes. I'm actually playing the game for a reason, you know, I'm playing Hitchhiker, getting kills because, you know, I've got a challenge to get like 10 kills with Hitchhiker a day. So, you know, I'm going to get 10 kills with Hitchhiker to get some XP bonuses towards my prestige or my profile level or towards my battle pass. And then when you get a battle pass in there, you know, the fucking sky's the limit with this game for battle passes, by the way. And, you know, there's a couple of things that we can get into after this as well. But I 100% need to see this next year. I really do. I, you know, they have, like I said, they did talk about it before the game came out that they weren't going to add something like that. Why not? 
you know, your game's dwindling, you need to be looking at, you know, thinking outside the box here or something. Do something that's going to save your game. This is 100% something gonna, that's going to save your game. Get some players involved. And the key thing about Battle Pass right now is, you know, a bigger content creator who's not me, you know, someone like Oddstarver or, you know, I don't know, anyone on Twitch. If someone streamed this game, they showcase the new Battle Pass, you know, they've got thousands of viewers watching it and they're like, oh wow, look at this new Battle Pass on Texas. Look at that fucking chainsaw, doesn't that look cool? Look at Cook's new uh, weapon that you can use. Look, look at the new executions, you know, just going through all that. The people are going to want to pick the game up and spend money on the game because they look at the Battle Pass and then they're like, wow, the gameplay was fun, but you know, I didn't feel worth my time. But now you have something that's worth your time. People are going to pick the game back up and spend money on a Battle Pass and to earn things. And you've got the currency in there as well that, you can spend on the new outfits that get added to the game. Oh, I'm out of breath, but <laughs> it's it's simple things. And this is what I think about all the time with this game and what these games sort of lack when they come and go. Evil Dead didn't have any of this shit as well. And, you know, the game just fucking died off because, you know, we got no communication. We got no content in the end for the game and everyone just got bored of it. And, you know, there was only the shoddy prestige system that you could go for that was a massive grind for a ridiculous reward. You, know, you got like a little PNG of a screamer or something. Like we we need something fleshed out, nice in Texas. You know, you've got a whole con like the the whole franchise of Texas and the law behind it. You've got so many things you can pull from to learn and to input into the game that will showcase a battle pass really well. You know, doing like uh, victim stories or something or case files. You know, throwing those into the game as battle passes could be something really really fucking awesome to look at. So, I think they need to be doing that. And that's at number four. So, at number three, it ties in with Battle Passes a little bit, which is events. And, you know, I got a lot of fucking hate last year. Uh, sorry, earlier this year. <laughs> I keep thinking it's 2024 already, but we're nearly there. It's the 28th currently. Uh, you know, I got a lot of hate earlier this year for me saying, wow, 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 this game doesn't have a Halloween event. And I was just thinking, why? Why, well, why am I getting hate for this? I'm just pointing out flaws, why the games aren't getting any player attention, why I'm watching the player base constantly just go lower and lower and lower in percentages is because they're not doing stuff like this. And I'm not saying this game needs to be massively live service, but come on. Come on. I just want to lay it out on the line right now. Your game just came out in September. There was one month until October. We got nothing for Halloween and a fucking ASIM horror game. You telling me that just wasn't out of the realm of possible? Like, how how were you not able to get that into the game? Was that not thought about before the game come out? I mean, this game, by the sounds of it, they had a lot of stuff unprepared before the game come out because I don't know if you look, go back to a couple of the dev streams and just listen through them. Wes kind of says that he pushed the game out, like he wanted to get the game out because they went in the hot fix mode and then they started putting putting all these fires out. They kept saying they had stuff in plan, but they kept saying they wanted to get the game out. They wanted to get the game out. It sounds to me like they had a fucking deadline that maybe they were running out of money and they said, fuck it, let me get the game out and just pushed it out there. So, I mean, this could also be Sumo Nottingham. I'm not going to be putting everything on gun right now, but Sumo Nottingham could be a problem here as well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, no Halloween event in a horror a sim. It was even Friday the 13th of October earlier this year. You know, having a Friday the 13th in October, which is horror month, you know, you, you did nothing. You did absolutely nothing. It just baffled me, man. Brand new a sim game. You know, you've got over 4 million players playing the game. Everybody's hyped about the game and it just fell fucking flat on its face on Halloween. I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't. If it was me, if it was my game, sure, there is licensing problems. We all know that happens, but that shit needs sorting out before your game even comes out. This sh like st Something should have been prepared. And I'm not saying you need to get ridiculous with events at all. The thing is with events and battle passes, they're kind of there to hold everyone in place until the new content drops. So that way, you know, people have such low atten attention spans, sorry, to where you kind of need to have something, not saying constantly going in your game, but something relatively close to something that's just come out. So then they have something else to look forward to. Now, having the events, uh, you know, a whole Halloween battle pass happening with this game, I'm not saying you need to get ridiculous with it where, you know, you need Santa Bubba and shit like that because this just would feel totally out of place. But having, like, a, a candy cane weapon for Cook, like, sharpened up or something like that, I, you know, uh, for a winter event, there's, there's things you can work out there. You can think, 
outside the box here how fucked up the family would be with an Easter bunny. Like, you know, leaving uh, bunnies around the map, like, fucking eyeballs scooped out and stuff. Like, you could just see how messed up the family really is in these events and explore them in depth a lot more and just seeing how truly fucked up they that you can make them look in the game. And everyone really loves horror, so there's so much creativity in that space there for these events to happen within Texas. And a lot of people just think, um, they hear event and they think, oh, Pumpkin Bubba, Jackal Lantern, Hitchhiker Head and shit like that. Nah, I'm thinking outside, like, it needs to be creative, it needs to be horror and inspiring. Something that we've never seen before. And, you know, you've got such a unique set of characters here that where you can put their twist on that holiday event and put it in the game as unlockables and with battle passes and stuff. Ah, but, you know, it probably won't ever happen, but I'm just, you know, that's something I would like to see next year, 100%. And just to touch on that, maybe he's joking aside, you know, touching on that a little bit. You know, we got Shirtless Johnny is coming out to the game. Yeah, so they gifted it. Well, they're saying everyone's going to be getting Shirtless Johnny um, that you're going to have to pay for. Uh, so if that's happening in the game, why the fuck is none of this happening? All I've got to say, you know, have a Texas summer barbecue event where everybody's just wearing their summer outfits, whatever that would be. You know, I'm not saying bikini skins or anything like that, but everyone's fucking horny playing Texas Chainsaw Massacre for some reason. But, uh, you know, why not have that? Why not have a Texas Chainsaw barbecue summer event and you could have so much fun with that as well? Uh, have little barbecues around the map that have fucking body parts on them and stuff. You know, it's, it's something cool, something fun. Give us something new to interact with for each event as well. You know, it's uh, player retention. I think it's very key. Events, battle passes, better progression system. This is very fucking important that we need to be seeing next year. It really is. And, you know, that was at number three for events. Now at number two, TCM2 content and licensed characters. 100% needs to fucking happen next year because, you know, we're so diverged in the full 70s and then people have asked where's, you know, Will we see this character come to the game? Will we see that character come to the game? And whatever, everything we've just talked about right now would be massively improved upon. So, you know, events, battle passes, uh, better cosmetics, all that stuff would be massively improved upon if this game was to shift towards the 80s era because everybody loves the fucking 80s. It sells like hotcakes. Why is it not even being talked about to be put into the game right now? Um, obviously, we've seen Bill Mosley at Gun Headquarters, who plays Chop Top, so we could potentially be seeing TCM2 content next year, which would be a fucking huge one. However, when they start talking about characters like Stretch and the victims, they're kind of like, eh, mm, eh, we don't want to add them in the game, because, you know, it doesn't quite fit the game's law because it's a prequel to the first movie, and he said stuff like, well, we could just do a whole Texas first. <sighs> Overthinking it way too much, okay? You've got, if you've got, <laughs> you've got fans of the game that are uh, horror law enthusiasts, right? Who are bringing out a museum mode. Let the museum mode fucking speak for the law. You don't have to have a law or a linear fucking timeline happening within a PvP multiplayer game. Just throw shit in there. What people like, you're like, you don't have any, any excuse right now. You, you don't have any time. You don't have anything like worth overthinking about right now because all you've got to be thinking about is that fucking player count just going down, down, down? What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do? You need to be thinking, I need some characters in here that people can relate to, people you know, that they've seen them in the actual movies. You know, you know, get Viggo Mortensen's character from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Get fucking Vilma from uh, Next Generation. And you don't need to really get their likeness in there um, too much. You know, yeah, it's, this shit's expensive. I understand that, but... You know, it's it's kind of going to be making or breaking it at this point for this game because, like I said, it's just a dwindling player base. We need to be starting to put this shit into the game. We need to be thinking about it, at least to be putting it into the game, you know, mid next year because we're going to have a problem here if we're not going to be if we're going to be in the same stagnant content points for such a long time and you know just getting the same sort of content drops. You know, the game's just going to feel very lackluster. It's going to get ran into the ground. But hopefully that doesn't happen. And, you know, we need to be seeing some TCM2 content next year. I, 
like I said, we don't need a linear storyline. We don't need the game to be set in this like early 70s or mid 70s for such a long time to where we can't get anything from the 80s within the game for a long time because you just need to put it all together. We need to make it fun, enjoyable for everyone and, you know, getting the player attention. And then people will just love the 80s stuff. They really will. Then you can go 80s battle passes, uh, better cosmetics, 100% from 80s style clothing. The maps would look fucking insane. The radio station, the Texas Funland, or whatever the hell it's called at the end of TCM2. You know, just having all these different maps, you know, with the neon lights and stuff that you had in the 80s. Because 80s horror for me was very peak uh, horror, and everything just felt so cool with, like, Synthwave. And uh, I don't know, for me, 80s horror is just amazing. And it would sell, like, hotcakes, especially in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um... If that's something that's going to be happening in year two for the game, you know, if, we, if TCM 2 is something that we're going to jump to once we get to, like, September time of the game's anniversary, then uh, fair enough. But, yeah, that's hopefully that happens next year because we really need it. And so well, I'm going to have to try and round this one off really quick here uh, because, <laughs> you know, like I said, this is my second time doing this video and I still ended up going on a rant about a lot of things, but... Uh, I kind of stayed true to the topics here a lot better than I did in my previous one. My previous one, I didn't even use my webcam. So, uh, you know, doing something like this was a bit more uh, personal and a bit more fun to do. And you guys can kind of see my reactions a lot better while I'm doing this. So anyways, licensed characters at number two that I want to see next year. Now at number one, this is the most fucking important thing that I want to see more than anything in this game right now that needs to happen next year. And they said that it might not happen but I need to see a crossplay friends list. I'm sorry, but the excuse about making a, an account, like, uh, let, let's just start from the beginning here. So having crossplay codes is fine, sort of, right? However, within this game, with its lobby systems, the crossplay code system becomes absolutely dog shit. And I'll explain why. So you get into a game uh, with a teammate, for example, uh, you just have one teammate. Oh, you've got another friend who wants to join? Well, after that game's finished, after you've waited like fucking 15 minutes for that game to finish or whatever, you go back to the main menu. Oh, I've got to disband the party. I've got to send another crossplay code out there. And then they've got to, got to wait for them to join. Then we can search up again. Oh, I've got another buddy who wants to play. Oh, I've got another buddy who wants to, you know, fucking rinse and repeat. I have, right, Wes, Wes, if you're watching this, which he probably isn't, but I'm just going to fucking say something right now. I have over 300 hours in this game on xbox right if i go on my xbox right now it says i have over 300 hours if i go on my total play time on texas chainsaw massacre it is 150 hours so that's half of my game time is only actually playing the game so the other 150 hours is you know me being sort of afk on my other screen because i do do that sometimes but it's mainly me fucking around in the menus respecting skill trees Sending out fucking crossplay codes, trying to get people into my lobbies, lobbies dying off, all that shit. It is a horrible, horrible experience where it's taken up almost half of the rest of my actual, like, overall game time within this game. And I'm not the only one that has this problem. This has happened to so many other people. And his excuse is so fucking bizarre to why they said they didn't want to do a crossplay friends list. And we'll quickly talk about that. So, with his crossplay friends list idea, he said um, he doesn't want to load the game up and get a login screen because he hates that. You know, I hate Wes. You know, what I fucking hate having to go on my Discord all the time and send out cross-play party invite codes to everyone because it's a pain in the ass. I'm using third-party software having to do that. Not everyone has a Discord. And then sometimes you won't even know if people are online. So you're just throwing a code out there into the ether, not even knowing if any of your friends are online. Now, I will also just say, because we all have lovely mobile phones here, he said uh, it would take a whole year for them to create a system like this. Uh, so you'd have to make a gun interactive account. You'd have to go on the website. You'd have to sign up to create a username and password and stuff. This never happened with Evil Dead, by the way. Evil Dead, however, came out on Epic Game Store. But with Evil Dead, <laughs> even if you just played this on console, uh, PlayStation, Xbox, whatever, with Evil Dead, you didn't have to sign up for anything. You just typed in a username and it found that person on the other on the other software. And Wes did talk about an off-the-shelf Epic Games um crossplay, but he said again, 
not many people like the Epic Games Store. Not like not many people like to log into a game and you know play a game and having to log in and create a username and password. Who are these people? Because I guarantee you, they're probably not even playing the fucking game. People like uh, me, who's on the game all the time, see this annoying shit and don't want it. You know, like I said, all the playtime that I've had fucking around with crossplay lobbies and seeing if my friends are online could have been solved within the first two minutes of me going on my mobile phone. Oh, Gun Interactive, sign up. Oh, log in with Google, log in with Facebook. All right, let's do that. Yeah, let's create a username. Done. You know, link it to my Xbox, link it to my PlayStation, have some cross progression going on. There's already some cross progression within the game because if I play on my Xbox or my Xbox version on PC, they link together. So why don't we fucking have that? And I'm not saying it's easy by any means at all. I'm just saying the way he said it, the way Wes came across about it was that he didn't like it, which is, you know, this is his game at the end of the day. He didn't like it, but... That's, that doesn't mean the masses aren't going to fucking, like, you know, they're going to like it because it's saving them time in the long run. You know, I'd love to just load the game up and being like, oh, Hotshot's online. Oh, Dustin's online. Oh, Khan's online. Invite, invite, invite. Instead of being like, oh, I've put my, I have to go on my Discord, guys. I'm going to have to send it in the Discord. I've got to type the code out every time. Oh, shit. Somebody else wants to get in. Oh, wait, they'll have to play this game. Oh, I'm going to have to disband the party, send my other code out again. Like, Ah, it annoys me, man. It annoys me. It, it, I think it was just more the excuse that kind of pissed me off about it. It really was. Yes, I'm not a game developer. And, you know, be, there will be people in the comment sections here that'll be going like, well, uh, you know, I can't wait to play your video game. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I mean, you don't have to be a fucking helicopter pilot to see that someone fucked up by crashing a helicopter into a tree. That's all I've got to say. But <laughs> I just want to point out the problems here with the, with the crossplay. It's just... It's stupid. It really is. Crossplay codes in 2023 going into 2024 and we're still having a system like this that works, you know, they have to use on Among Us or something like that. And I, I'm just saying in the long term, it would be nice to save a lot of time to have parties not needing to be disbanded to invite our friends into the game. And a lot of people don't see this as a big deal, but for me, drastically, when I'm looking at my playtime and game time and, you know, half my playtime is... Uh, sorry, my playtime's half of my actual game time. I'm I'm kind of thinking, what the fuck's happened there? You know, I'm <laughs> spending 150 plus hours looking at a lobby or respecking skill trees or something along those lines. It's kind of messed up. And I'm pro I'm like I said, I'm not the only one out there. So many people that have like half of the actual playtime than looking at their game time within the game. And yeah, that could be all spectating and stuff. There's a lot of different factors there, but it doesn't take away the fact that crossplay friends list should be existing in this game 100%. If fucking Evil Dead can do it, uh, you know, I don't want to hear the excuse, well, you know, I know people that don't like Epic Game Store or anything. If it, if it's, it comes to it, and yeah, like I said, you said that it would take a whole year to add crossplay friends uh, because you'd have to make a whole new system. You'd have to put security in there so people's data didn't get leaked or, you know, hacked or anything like that. Totally understandable. Yeah, doing something like that could take a whole long time, but then, you know, there's the off-the-shelf cross-play friends list that already exists within Epic Games Store. Just go for it. You know, at the end of the day, you've got nothing to lose other than whatever little players that you've got left within the video game right now. Uh, and you can't be losing them. You need to be doing stuff for them to keep them engaged, keep them entertained, and keep them happy to be playing your video game going into the new year because, you know, you've got some competition coming out. We've got Killer Clowns dropping. It's probably going to be one or two other ASM games that we're going to be seeing. We're going to be seeing some ASM games coming to console from PC as well. So there's going to be a lot of different stuff to be playing ASM-wise the point where people are going to start turning their heads away from texas because you know we don't have the the nice things on it we don't have the things that people want in the game and it's not a case of me being entitled but i'm just being realistic here that's who i am i put it bluntly i put it you know i don't sugarcoat anything i put it out there how i see the game and like i said it right now um you know it's we're in this little bubble of the game right now where we're enjoying the gameplay, but, you know, there's just so much stuff that's just messing things up massively within the game. And 
yeah, it's a bit of a mess, honestly. But, but anyways, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully, you've enjoyed this video. I did end up going almost an hour long again. So take this as a podcast if you want. It's only fair because I haven't been streaming at all. And I kind of want to make it up to you guys. But this has been my 10 things I'd like to see for Texas next year. Leave me a comment about it. Leave me your 10 things that you want to see from Texas for next year. I really would love to read those. And just get everyone's opinions on board. Because like I said, I want to see this game improve massively next year. It needs to happen. You know, there could be a case of the game shifting developers completely from Sumo Nottingham. I hope that does happen. Because Sumo maybe just be way out of their depth right now. In terms of trying to do any of this stuff. And I think that stuff needs to be happening. But... Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, hit that sub button for more content like this. And I do cover Texas Chainsaw Massacre quite a lot. Uh, so you don't have to go anywhere else. I also stream on this channel too. So you don't have to go on Twitch or anything. You can watch my streams right here on this YouTube channel. And I hope you guys had an amazing holiday. I hope you guys have a fantastic new year. I probably won't see you until after new year now. But hopefully you've enjoyed this video. I have missed you guys a lot on the streams. I will be back soon. My battery's fully recharged and I've had a lot of fun doing this uh, video and trying to catch up with everyone. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. I've been Pixel, this is my awesome viewers. I'll catch you guys in the next one.